They say nothing changes in Texas politics until it does. Till it does. Till the Texas power grid failed and our families froze without water and electricity. Until white Texas politicians removed our history from the classroom. Until they made it legal to buy a gun without a permit and openly carry it. We are our mothers. mothers. There is a new MAGA in town, at least here in Texas. They are mothers against Greg Abbott, and they've got plenty of reasons to be upset. I'm Yasmin Khan with Rebel HQ, and Mothers Against Greg Abbott recently released an ad that's gone a bit viral. It features women from various walks of life, including, and notably, a woman working on her ranch in rural Texas, who are tired of the ways in which Greg Abbott's leadership as the governor of Texas has made life very difficult and ultimately worse for Texans, specifically Texan mothers. Now, full disclosure, I am not a mother, not here in Texas, nor elsewhere, but I have plenty of friends who are, and I hear the struggles they deal with. They're afraid to send their children to school or even to daycare, and some of them have actually had gun threats in their children's schools and daycares, so their fears aren't hysterical or unhinged. Some of them have considered homeschooling their kids, yes, because of the threat of violence that their kids face at school, but also because of what the Texas GOP has done and is still trying to do to the public school curriculum. Of course, most families don't have the time or money to be able to sit at home all day with their kids and homeschool them, and the Texas GOP knows that. And during the pandemic, Texas was the first state to reopen after a very soft shutdown, which among other things made life incredibly difficult for families with school-aged children. Teachers weren't required to wear masks in classrooms, and when one kid inevitably caught the virus, the whole class would have to stay home from school for days or weeks at a time. There was no consistency apart from constant disruption, not just for the students' education, but also to the parents' routines and work schedules. But as a non-mother who is of birthing age, I will say that the question of whether or not I even want to have kids is no longer up to me, at least not while I'm living here. Even if I decided that I wanted to have a kid, I don't think I'd even want to try anymore because in the event that something goes wrong with the pregnancy, I don't have as many options available to me as I did before, and the Texas GOP is particularly vigilant about making sure of that. But the ad, however poignant it is, has of course been met with criticism, but a lot of that criticism seems to be rooted in skepticism and fear of hope. It's partly rooted in the belief that women tend to vote with their husbands, which sounds sexist, and it sounds like women don't have their own agency. There's also the belief that white women elected Donald Trump, so they can't be counted on to vote against someone like Greg Abbott. But is any of it true? Let's start here. According to Pew Research, going back to 1980, among eligible voters, women tend to turn out to the polls more than men. That voting gap seems to be widening over time, but it's not because more women are voting than ever before, it's because fewer men are voting. Also, the voting gap is even wider within certain demographics. For instance, if you look at the data from 2016's election, the voting gap for the overall population showed a four-point difference between men and women voters. However, if you look at just the Hispanic community, the gap is five points. And if you look at the black community, it jumps up to a whopping 10 points. Another point of consideration is levels of education. The voting gap between men and women tends to be even wider amongst people without four-year college degrees, again, and more specifically because fewer men without college degrees vote. As far as party affiliation goes, Pew Research found that in the lead up to the 2020 election amongst registered voters, 56% of women leaned Democrat while only 38% leaned Republican. Conversely, 50% of men identified as Republican compared to 42% leaning Democrat. This gap between men and women has been widening since 2014, with the overall trend being that over time, women become more aligned with the values of the Democratic Party than the Republican Party. That gap is even wider when looking at levels of education. Notably, the GOP has a pretty solid stronghold amongst men without college degrees. I do want to point out that as of 2020, only slightly more white women identified as Democrats than Republicans, with 48% identifying as Democrats and 47 identifying as Republicans. It's not a huge gap, it's barely even a gap at all, but I wanted to point that out because as I mentioned previously, white women have repeatedly been blamed for the 2016 election of Donald Trump, 
And this data is from just a few years after that election. In Texas specifically, 62% of white women in Texas voted for Donald Trump, compared to only 38% that voted for Joe Biden. Now, I do want to point out really quickly that this data doesn't necessarily look at how people voted. It looks at their political affiliations and whether or not they voted at all. Who knows what's actually going on in the voting booth? This leads to the notion that white women, specifically heterosexual married white women, vote the way their husbands want them to instead of the way that they themselves might actually want to. This takes us back to Hillary Clinton. An article from 2017 in The Guardian stated, quote, conventional wisdom says women will show solidarity at the polls, but new research shows that for white women, having a husband trumped the sisterhood. Interesting choice of word, considering the accusation that white women elected Donald Trump. They literally trumped us. The article points out that while Obama was able to rally black voters in 2008, winning 95% of the black vote that year, Hillary wasn't able to do so with women voters. She only garnered 54% of women voters in 2020, with white women voting more for Trump than for Hillary. Now, while on the campaign trail for the 2016 election, Hillary said, Women will be under tremendous pressure, and I'm talking principally about white women. They will be under tremendous pressure from fathers and husbands and boyfriends and male employers not to vote for the girl. It's quite a broad statement, and it makes white women sound like they're pushovers who can't think for themselves, and I'm sure it didn't help to hear that from another white woman. It probably didn't endear many women, white or otherwise, to Hillary's plight. But according to research from Oregon State University, she might have been onto something. The research found that single women tend to vote based on social issues in solidarity with other women, while married women tend to think more economically about politics, thinking more about their husbands and families than about sisterhood. Marriage seems to shift thinking in women from being more collective to more individualistic. The article also noted that advances made for women, for example, the Me Too movement in the workplace, tend to be viewed by married women as attacks against or at least threats to their husbands and their husbands' ability to make money and provide for their families. So is it a little condescending and insulting to one's intelligence to be told that because you're this, you have to also be that? Should all women vote for the woman on the ticket just because she's a woman on the ticket? Not necessarily, there are a lot of reasons to have not wanted to vote for Hillary in 2020. But to vote for Donald Trump instead? That's almost unfathomable. Honestly, it's almost unfathomable to vote for him over anyone, but here we are in 2022 with a twice impeached, one term serving wannabe fascist teasing his 2024 presidential run. I always think of this one line from 30 Rock when Tina Fey's character, a white woman, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Tina Fey, is confessing all of the worst aspects of her character to her love interest, just laying it all out on the table. One of the things she mentioned in her confession was that she tells people she's going to vote for Obama, but she'll probably actually vote for McCain. And it was this moment where liberal women everywhere, regardless of race or ethnicity, were like, yes, we do it. Of course, Tina's character was a single woman at the time, so take that reference with a grain of salt, but it was also years before Hillary was a presidential candidate, and years before Hillary made her comment about white women voters. But you can't base a political strategy on the supposition that people lie on exit polls, and being offended at all the ways that Donald Trump has insulted nearly every minority group in this country isn't enough of a reason for people to not vote for him. We've seen this time and time again, but progressives still keep trying to use outrage to drive votes. Now, why doesn't it work? Because words don't necessarily translate to actions, and even if they do, those actions won't necessarily affect the individual. Sure, Donald says he likes to grab women by their you-know-whats, but like he's not going to grab mine. Americans live very cushy lives that are largely insulated from the problems of the world, the nation, and the state. I personally haven't felt the brunt of the abortion ban here in Texas because I haven't gotten pregnant since abortion was banned and criminalized in my state. Life has more or less continued on for me as it always has, but that doesn't mean that I'm not constantly aware of the fact that my rights to healthcare have been stripped. And if I really wanted to, and this was recently pointed out to me by a liberal white man, I am fortunate enough to have the means to travel out of state for an abortion if it ever came down to it. In other words, it's not a huge deal, or it shouldn't be a huge deal for me specifically as an individual. But like many progressives, 
I try to think about what's best for most people, for society, but I'm not the one that these mothers against Greg Abbott need to convince. So is this new MAGA any sort of game changer or just more of the same? Putting my own aforementioned fear of hope aside, I want to say that it is. If married women vote with their own families in mind, this might sway some of them. Their families are the ones being targeted, their families are the ones being made unsafe and unprotected from a deadly virus and a mismanaged pandemic thanks to Texas leadership. Texan families froze to death when the power grid failed thanks to Texas leadership. Texan children continue to get shot in schools thanks to Texan leadership. And families continue to get slowly polluted to death by Texan leadership. Maybe mothers will vote for their own children, if not for ours. And that's it for me. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like and share this video if you found it interesting, though I'll admit that there's a lot more to unpack here. Also subscribe to the Rebel HQ channel for more content like this and follow me on IG and TikTok for more of just me. 